about justice. Alright, who's responsible for justice in society? You are, I am, we all are. And so again, I've tried to share, not working good here, that we often look to the politicians and the police officers and judges uh, for justice in society. And they have a role, okay? And their role is different than ours. But the point is, guys, is the Bible recognizes we all have a role, okay? And that's why you see a lot of verses like Micah 6, 8. What does God require of us? Okay? To do justice, to love kindness, and to walk humbly with our God. And so the point is, guys, is we all need to do justice. Now, um, um, we've been focusing the last few weeks about the requirement, what God's law requires us, uh, to, in, in informing proper authorities in the sphere of the state, okay? The police and court and things like that. And so uh, uh, that's good, but I want to make it practical. And so, and this thing is really getting hard. Today, we're going to look in the family sphere. See? So, uh, because that's a little more practical for you guys. How many of you guys have ever been to court to testify? Probably not very often, huh? Uh, uh, and, and so the point that I want us to see, guys, is, is the same principles we can apply in our family. Okay? This thing's not working good. Okay? So, who is responsible then for justice, guys, in your family? And everyone, again, we all play a role. They're different. But they all, now, most of us don't look to the president and to politicians and the judges and the policemen uh, for justice in society. Sometimes that's required, guys, just so you know. Sometimes it is. But for the most part, we don't. Okay? And, uh, and so today, we're looking at them. We're talking about informing. We're talking about, this is what I want us to understand, guys. How to tattletale to the glory of God. Is this practical? Huh? How do you tattletale to the glory of God? Well, the quick, short answer is you don't, okay? You don't tattletale, okay? So let me explain, okay? There's a difference between tattletaling and informing, okay? There's a tattletale and then there's an informer, okay? And so defining your terms is super important. You have a question? I know, you got it, you got it, and I did that on purpose, I'm glad, see, I'm glad you're thinking things through, and that's why I wanted to spend this time looking at how do we understand the difference between tattletaling and informing, okay, so that's good, so the point I want you guys to understand is this, guys, we, there's times where you ought to be an informer, okay, but you ought not be a tattletale, so do we need to know the difference? Yes, okay, because they both they both have the idea of informing an authority of about bad behavior, okay? So that's what they both have in common. But here's the difference, okay? Tattling is, is, is with petty things. We'll talk about this in a minute. It's, tattling is when you're easily provoked, quick to tell. Uh, tattling, this is the big one, is, is self-centered. You're focused on yourself. Uh, and it's often motivated by jealousy, by bitterness, by rivalry, by uh, the Bible basically just describes those things as an absence of love. Okay? Uh, and so that's tattling. Now, informing is when there's significant issues. Sometimes proper authorities, mom and dad, need to be informed. And they're focused usually on the well-being of others, not so much yourself. Okay? That's key. So, go to the next one. The reason, so we don't want to be tattling, we want to know when the proper time to inform is. Now, the reason this is so applicable is because we live in a sinful world. You know that? You know that? We just read about the beginning, okay, of the sinful world, the cursed world we live in. And guess what, guys? Part of living in a sinful world is every single person you meet is, guess what? A sinner. And guess what you are? A sinner. And when you get sinners together, you get more sin or less sin. More sin. And so the world is full of conflict. And so, go to the next one. And so what we need to do then is, is when we talk about informing, we need to know how and when the appropriate time is to speak the truth to the glory of God. Not tattling. How to speak the truth to the glory of God. Go to the next one. So how many of you guys have ever heard or used things like this? 
He called me a name. She isn't being nice to me. Tegan wouldn't throw the ball to me. Calissa took my toy. Bradley won't help with the chores. They touched me. <laughs> or the infamous Brayden looked at me. On purpose. Huh? Right? Ellie won't share. Okay? Emery yelled at me. How many of you guys have heard any of these? I'm not saying with a specific name. Huh? How many of you guys have said these things? Maybe some of them. Okay? Here's my point, guys. This is every one of us has dealt with this. Okay? So, what I want you guys to understand is all of those, I would argue, on a surface level, okay? But on a surface, every one of those guys, guess what? It's tattled. Look at it, they're all focused on self. He won't throw the ball to me. What do we want? See, I want the ball. Okay? He took my toy. What do I want? I want my toy. All right? Uh, uh, he looked at me. What do you want? That person in trouble. The other person in trouble. Right? So the point is they're all self. Go to the next one. Okay? And so we don't want to do that. Now, all these things come up. Guys, you know why it's so easy to tattle? Is because conflict, guys. Conflict is everywhere. Go to the next one. See, the Bible says, if possible, so far as it depends on you, live peaceably with... What's the last word? All. Oh, now, here's the thing, guys. It's pretty easy to live peaceably with tickets. You know who Tiggis is? Yeah. He's a guy in Africa. Okay? He's, he goes to pastor uh, to Travis's church. Okay? You know why it's easy to live peaceably for me with tickets? Because I don't live with them. I hardly see them. Right? See, it's easy to live with people. It's easy to be at peace with people that you never see. Okay? If they're not in your church or they're not, here's a big one, in your family. Right? But when you live with people, or you go to church with people, or you work with people, you're, when you're with people, then get, that's when it gets hard to get along. Right? Why? See, because of sin. So what I want to do, guys, here's the thing. To live peaceably with people, guess what, guys? It takes the wisdom, it takes the Spirit of God applying biblical principles. So I'm going to give you a lot today, right now, real quick, way faster. I can spend lots of weeks on this. I'm not going to. We're going to go really quick through this. Because this is how you know how to speak the truth in your family and seek justice. Ready? Right? To do justice. So, principles for speaking the truth, for informing. Here we go. Number one is your motivation is big. I mentioned this last week, but this is the biggie. Okay? What's your motivation? Is your motivation something you want for yourself? Or is your motivation looking out for others? Okay? That's the biggest one. Go to the next one. Okay? Are we pursuing the good and the safety of others? Now, sometimes, guys, just so you know, you see a crime or there's abuse going on, you need to speak for yourself. But what I'm saying is that typically with your siblings, are you, the first thing to ask, go to the next one, is this question. This will go for parents. This is the one we should know. What are you hoping will happen to your sibling as a result of your informing? See, if your goal is they get in trouble, or if your goal is to get something for yourself, see, is that tattling that or is that informing? Tattling. That's not for the glory of God then, is it? Okay, so what I want you to see is that, so let me give you an example. I had, the person we're named, unnamed, but this actually happened since last children's sermon. Somebody came and told me so-and-so uh, took the tricycle. He has the tricycle and I had it. Now what is that person after? He's after it for, for who? For himself. Okay, now I had another time a few years ago where Gracie came to me and she said, the boys are about to go sledding where they're not supposed to go sledding. So I went out there, and if you've been to my house, you know the hill is on the trampoline. Pretty steep, about 30 feet. And they were aiming for rocks at the bottom because they figured the rocks would stop them. Okay? <laughs> this is Johnny. This is thank God for girls, right? Um, just provide safety for the other four. Although Timmy wasn't part of it. But anyway, the point is this, guys. Give Gracie the benefit of the doubt. I think she's the one who told me, okay? She was looking out for the good of her brothers, right? Because, you know, they're aiming for rocks because they needed something to stop them, but what would have happened? They would have kept going. No. No, they would have hit the rocks and broke something, okay? So, like, body part broke something, okay? So the point is, is hopefully she was looking out for the good of others. Do you see the difference? Now, let's go on to the next one. Motivation. Number two, guys, focus on relationships. Guys, your siblings, you're going to be... Your, you have a relationship with your siblings longer than anybody else in this world, probably. Because if things go naturally, your parents will die before your siblings. 
And, and you haven't met the person you're going to marry, probably, or maybe you have and you don't know yet. But anyway, the point is, that relationship is important. So go to the next one. Proverbs 20, verse 3 says this, It is an honor for a man to keep aloof from strife, but every fool will be quarreling. Guys, if we're constantly getting in people's face, trying to start fighting, guys, the point is our relationships are more important. Go to the next one. We see the same thing. Hatred stirs up strife, but love covers all offenses. We'll see this again. Go to the next one. Okay? Number two, don't be hasty to tell. This is you. Look at this right out of the bottle. Go ahead. Next one. Proverbs 25 says this. What your eyes have seen, do not bring hastily to the court. For what will you do in the end when your neighbor puts you to shame? How many of you guys have been quick to go tell on somebody and then you end up getting in trouble? That's what this verse is telling me. Careful now. Careful. Don't be so hasty. Next one. Okay? Learn to resolve conflict. Now, guys, most adults don't know how to resolve conflict. Okay? So, this is huge. But the point is, guys, is we have to learn. Go to the next one. See, Proverbs 25 says this. Instead of going right away to others, what should you do? Argue your case with your neighbor or your brother, or your sister, himself, and don't reveal another secret. See, this is the issue with tattling, guys. On the one sense, you're telling the truth, right? He took the tricycle. He did this. He did that. But on the other hand, guys, you're, you're betraying a confidence, okay? And that's why there's a conflict between tattling, okay? You shouldn't be quick to reveal another secret, okay? Uh, and then, uh, uh, so, but you have to go to the person. Is it hard to work things out with your brother or sister? Yes, or even your friends at times. Yes, but that's what we need. Number five, the, the focus has to be on help others, right? Whether it, you, you see a crime, right? Like we talked about last time, Mordecai telling when King Ahasuerus or whatever was going to be killed. Or two, you see somebody in destructive behavior, right? So if, if somebody knows that Gracie is starting to do drugs, that's destructive behavior. That would be a secret that might be willing to reveal so that she can get help. You see how that is? It's looking for others. Which leads to the next one. Don't gossip though. If Grace is doing drugs. Okay. I shouldn't go tell. Well me. I'm the dad. You shouldn't go talk to Elise about it. You should seek to find somebody who can help. Right. Not gossip. I've done enough children's sermons on gossip. Not going to go on that. And then lastly. Is we need. This is a huge one guys. Overlook personal offenses. Go ahead with the passage. Good sense. How many of you guys want good sense? That's right. Good sense makes one slow to anger. And it is his glory to overlook an offense, guys. Most of the time we tattle, guess what, guys? It's a minor offense. It's a personal offense that we don't need to make a big deal about. Go to the next one. Whoever covers an offense seeks love. See, when it comes to your, with your brothers and sisters and, and fighting, guess what? What we need to be about is seeking love. Remember, hatred stirs up strife. Hatred is quick to tell, try to get people to... Hatred is stirring up strife. Love covers an offense. But he who repeats a matter separates close friends. So we need to be, be long-suffering. Okay, go to the last one. And so the point is, guys, is that's a lot of stuff, isn't it? Is that a lot? I mean, guys, we'll spend our entire lives seeking to apply those to our lives. In our families, in church, and where we work, and, and everywhere, guys. And so the point is this. You see, it goes back to the same, the, where I started. It takes, guys, the Spirit of God applying the biblical principles to life all the time. Is that hard? Amen, that's hard. That's why there's so much conflict in the world, even in churches. Go to the next one. Okay? So, if possible, so far as it depends on you, live peaceably with all. And that includes your siblings. So let's pray and ask God to give us grace. That we would know the biblical principles, but that by His Spirit, guys, we would apply them to our lives for His glory. Let's pray. Dear God, we thank You for Your Word and how applicable it is. Help us, Lord, to be the kind of people uh, that pursue You uh, and that through our, our pursuit of You and our walking with You, we're able to truly love others as You call us to do. Forgive us for our many sins and help us, Lord, to be uh, 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 faithful followers of Christ in how we treat others, especially our sins. We pray all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, guys.